While we know that there are three major classifications of color in the thoroughbred, have you ever wondered what this means in a genetic sense? Does it mean that bays are better than chestnuts and chestnuts in turn better than greys? Well, Federico Tessio, considered by many to be a master of breeding, studied this. The three main categories are bay, chestnut and grey. Within these three categories, we will note that there are subcategories such as dark bays, liver chestnuts and English bays to name a few. What is interesting that Tessio noted that since thoroughbreds are hybrids as a result of selective breeding and not genuine pure breeds, color determination is more a question of dominant genes rather than not. For example, two bay thoroughbreds or hybrids may reproduce a bay with a mix of different shades of bay from that of its parents. Two polar bears on the other hand, which is a pure breed and white, will reproduce to give us a fully white polar bear cub. Research conducted by Tessio has given modern day racing the following fundamental. 1. From mating two chestnut thoroughbreds, the result was always a chestnut. 2. From mating two bay thoroughbreds, the result was always either a bay or a chestnut. 3. From the mating of a bay and chestnut, the result was always either a bay or a chestnut. 4. No grey was ever born if at least one of its parents was not grey. 5. A chestnut or bay, however, has been born to two grey thoroughbreds. 6. Some bay thoroughbreds, whether mated to a bay or chestnut, have invariably produced bays. These same thoroughbreds have, however, produced greys once in a while when mated with a grey thoroughbred. When we speak of human hair, we could create simplistically just two categories, dark and fair. Bay coats consist of various reddish brown hairs with the mane, legs and tail being black and are considered equivalent of human dark hair in equine terms. With more and more black hairs, the coat becomes darker and hence even horses that appear black are still categorized as bay. Chestnut coats on the other hand consist of yellowish brown hair with the legs, tail and mane being the same color and, well in human terms, this is fair. Chestnuts too can go through different shades varying from golden to dark chestnuts. Using these fundamentals regarding the study of coats, it then becomes necessary to study dominant and recessive genes. Statistics have shown that while bay is considered dominant, chestnut is considered recessive. Therefore, a chestnut when it arrives, by virtue of being recessive, is necessarily pure. Bays on the other hand could be pure or hybrid. A pure bay stallion is one who will always sire a bay foal irrespective of whether the broodmare is chestnut or not. A hybrid bay, on the other hand, may sire a chestnut foal as well as bay foals. Therefore, a dominant pure bay crossed to a chestnut will always provide a bay foal and a recessive chestnut mated with another chestnut will always produce a chestnut. Finally, when one considers grey thoroughbreds, we see that there are fewer greys on the race courses as compared to bays and chestnuts. This is interestingly because grey is not really considered a coat but a pathological discoloration of the two basic coats, bay and chestnut. It is important to note though that while there are more bay classic winners than chestnuts and even more than greys, this strange pigmentation disease in grey horses have no bearing on their athletic prowess.